Welcome. Today, we will look at the lithosphere. As you remember, we have defined the lithosphere as the layer overlying the low velocity zone. From a mechanic standpoint, the lithosphere is the rigid unit overlying the softer and more easily deformable asthenosphere. Understanding the nature and behavior of the lithosphere is necessary to understand plate tectonics, as well as the formation of mountains and sedimentary basins. How thick is the lithosphere? Is its depth constant over the entire Earth? In the previous class, we have seen that the boundary between the asthenosphere and the lithosphere corresponds to the isotherm separating fully solid rocks above from partially molten rocks below. This temperature is usually assumed to be 1300 degrees. The depth of this isotherm and thereby the thickness of the lithosphere depends on the geothermal gradient. In the case shown in the slide, the lithosphere is around 90 kilometers thick. In domains where the geothermal gradient is very high, the 13 degree, 100 degrees isotherm will be shallower and the lithosphere thinner. In regions where geothermal gradients are low, the lithosphere will be thick. Focusing now on the structure inside the lithosphere, you can see a major change in seismic velocities at around 30 kilometers depth. This major discontinuity is called moho and defines the base of the crust. Velocity changes across the moho are of 30 to 50 percent and occur over very short distances. We know quite a lot about the moho. In some regions, like northwest Italy and Oman, old mold moho surfaces and adjacent rocks are exposed at the surface where they can be examined. Rocks below the moho have seismic velocities of 8 km per second and densities of more than 3,000 kg per cubic meter. These rocks are therefore part of the mantle. Corresponding rocks are mainly peridotites, composed predominantly of the heavy and strong Milleran olivin. Rocks above the moho have lower seismic velocities and are much lighter. They are typically gabbros, which are intrusive rocks with no olivine and a lot of feldspars, or metamorphic rocks. But we're not finished yet. While the rocks of the lithospheric mantle are fairly homogeneous over the entire Earth, this is not the case for crustal rocks. Two very different domains are defined, the oceanic crust and the continental crust. The oceanic crust is simple, is typically less than 10 kilometers thick, is made up of three fairly continuous layers composed from bottom to top of gabbros, basalts and sediments, and has young ages, never older than 180 million years ago. The continental crust is much more variable and complex. Thicknesses range from 70 to 15 kilometers. It is composed of a large variety of rocks, mainly metamorphic, organized in a fairly unstructured way, and can have very old rocks, up to 4 billion years. Let us now summarize what we've learned until now, starting from the asthenosphere, which is the layer of partially molten rocks. The entire package of rocks overlying the asthenosphere is called lithosphere, and is characterized by its behavior more rigid than that of the asthenosphere. We mentioned that the boundary between the asthenosphere and the lithosphere is an isotherm and that its depth depends on the thermal gradient. The lithosphere itself is subdivided in two parts by the moho discontinuity. The domain below the moho is the lithospheric mantle and is composed of cold and strong rocks. Layers above the moho belong to the crust. Two very different types of crust are known the oceanic crust and the continental crust. 